So I'm putting on, this is a bee veil. Uh, it's very important that when you work with bees, you have protective equipment available. Yeah. Literally, so I'm not can, really concerned. I'm not really concerned. Yeah, about I'm, I'm a little worried. My name is Miri Newcomb. Hi, I'm Chaya Ben Baruch. We started off in, in Mary's kitchen, basically, experimenting over and over again to make the best lip balm on the planet. We started by making our own lip balm that's made out of beeswax and olive oil and essential oils and... 100% love. Right. So this is my husband, Dave. He didn't imagine that uh, eight years ago he was going to be keeping bees either. Our bee mobile. <laughs> Did not come together with the bees. Girly girls, I'm so proud of you. So we make lip balms in four different scents, and they're excellent and made with 100% love. We have artisanal raw honey. We have a whole selection of different beeswax candles. Why did you decide to call uh, the business uh, Chicago? I have a very, very good friend, and I said, we're starting this business, we have lip balm, we want it to be cute, we want it to be kind of Israeli sounding, but you know, we're Americans, and she said, hmm, lips, hmm, how about Nishika? That was the one that was, yes, this is it, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it's 100% made with love because we're starting out with a great friendship. When I came to the realization that I needed to make Aliyah, it was like a light bulb went off. They said, oh, there's this great organization called Nefesh Benefesh, contact them. I was just at a point in my life, it's like, I'm tired of fighting to be my Jewish self. I'd heard all sorts of horror stories about, oh, you can't force your kids to make Aliyah, it's a bad idea. So what I did was I said, we are going to take a trip we're going to visit Israel. None of us had ever been. They loved it the moment they got off the plane. They had freedom here that they didn't have in the United States. My 10-year-old daughter, I could send her in the morning down to the Makolet to get barekas by herself. I couldn't do that in the United States. I said to my husband, um, Let's go live on a kibbutz in Eretz Israel because for the long run, that would be a great, um, secure environment for our special needs kids. I think the people in Israel and the fact that we have socialized medicine made their lives so much better than they could have. If someone would have said to me 29 years ago, your kid with Down syndrome is going to go through open heart surgery, he's going to work, he's going to get married, and he's going to live an hour and a half away from you in his own apartment, without you, that was not written in any book ever. And Israel has the resources. I cannot tell you how I love Yom Ha'atzmaut. It's my favorite hog. Is it really a hog? Yeah, yeah, it's a hog for me. I like to watch the Tekkes on TV. You know, when you grew up in another country and you, you know, you walked and danced in the streets in, in New York on Yom Ha'atzma'ut and, and you yearned to come to Eretz Israel and pretty soon 25 years have gone by. I may not have an Israeli accent, but this is where my roots are. This is where I belong. It just took me until I was in my 40s or 30s to get here, but there's never a bad time to make Aliyah. <laughs>